welcome in to episode 20 of our Let's Play Humankind at Top Difficulty series. We are cranking along at Humankind Difficulty, the most challenging difficulty mode currently in the game. We are in the early modern era playing as the Muggles. The game has gone relatively well thus far. We are sitting solidly in second place. We've got some nice catch up going on right now. And we're hoping that we can sit here in the early modern for a little bit longer to grab some extra stars. That is the goal today. In this episode, I want to play out the early modern as much as we can while trying to maximize stars. If we were in the lead, we might make a slightly different play, possibly. Uh, but I think that what we want to do is really focus in on uh, the aspect of we're behind, so we need era stars. And before we move up, we want to get those era scores. First things first, though, before I jump into the game, I hope that everyone had a happy holiday season. Uh, I'm a week delayed in the recording and releasing of these, so uh, I hope that you're looking forward to the new year and that your holiday season was fantastic. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you need to catch up on any of the episodes in this series, the link to episode one is down in the description below. Thank you for watching. Let's jump in to the episode. Here we are, of course. In our capital city of Anug, 44 people strong now, so our population continuing to grow. As you recall, uh, we were having, in some of our cities, we still are having some population issues. Uh, we're 44 of 51 here now. That is because, in the last episode, we were able to run a surprising takeover. I didn't think it was actually going to work based on the resistance that we had been receiving from Plosif, uh Green here up to the north. But we were able to take over a free people's city, and that freed up a lot of population for us as we added in uh, some new districts here that had no population attached with them once we had destroyed the free, free people's city. We also gained access to the Pemokali. So, yes, we indeed have the Pemokali, the Great Blue Hole, and then if you come down here, we also have the Gunung Mulu, and if you scroll on down here, we also have the Great Barrier Reef. All of these wonders are currently in our capital city so all all those wonders in one city which is pretty wild um it's making for a very nice city hopefully that will prove very fruitful over the course of the rest of the game um we are doing a couple of other things we're trying to maximize stars as i mentioned so we have no builder stars currently we are playing a builder affinity culture the muggles and we have no builder stars so we got to get some builder stars we need to finish off our science stars we have 11 military uh, victory kills until we have a, our third military star. This is very tempting to go after. Uh, we've got one spot that we might be looking at for that, so we'll pay attention to that. We'd like to grab a few more agrarian stars. Uh, maybe an aesthete star. I'm not seeing any merchant stars coming for us. We've just never been making money in this game at a very uh, big pace. We've kind of been spending it all as we're getting it, so our bank is never really increasing all that much. Um, and then uh, a Diplomat Star, maybe one more Diplomat Star would be nice. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. Those are always kind of wherever my guys are at and going, like we can, we'll see whether we collect one of those over the course of time. We also have pretty good queues going on, so that's going to help us with our Builder Stars. Uh, we're going to try to get all of this stuff built, right? And we also need to get our Java Moss Jeeds in, so we have a ton left to do in this era. Now, no one has moved up, and we are approaching... I Icarus in first place here. I, we're, what, 7, 700? 700 only behind at this point? Uh, that feels pretty good to me. Uh, so we'll see if we can continue to catch up through the course of this era. I don't know how many more stars he already has than me or how many he's planning on getting uh, as the AI is difficult to predict that way in this game before he moves up. There isn't anyone that I was particularly looking at. I didn't take a hard look, but I'm not feeling like torn to move up really quickly again if we were in the lead i probably would move up a little bit faster here try to get out in front uh in from an era and a tech standpoint uh but we actually need more fame right to catch icarus so we're gonna kind of be sitting here for a little bit let's open by just checking some of our uh treaties and relationships we don't need to do any of these right now and we have too many demands with icarus to do anything else uh we can make uh, a embassy agreement towards Nox, so that would be good. We're actually already trading with her, which is nice. Um, so, I mean, let, we, I'll just throw Diplo cooperation out there. This Never a bad one. Should be in okay. all our best it, it's in both our best interests, but that's fine. Uh, Burley just refused a customs union earlier, and we're not currently trading for any science stuff, but we could. We're making 400 money per turn. 
We could snag some sciency things. That wouldn't be the worst idea. What what would it cost maybe to get mercury? Like what if we bought this mercury? We'd go from 280 to 339, which is it's not terrible. What is that? Almost it's 40 and 20, like 60 gold per turn. It would drop us by a little bit. But it would also get us well, it would get us 2%, then another 3 so we get, what's 3%? It would get us 3% science boost, plus the stability from that. I'm not opposed to it. Let's purchase it. Let's purchase it. We drop our uh, in money by a little bit, but I think that's worth it. Plus two science per researchers. We are stacking researchers right now. Lead might be worth it, but again, the, the, the route is going to be expensive. Uh, we go from, what is it, like 60, 60 gold per turn again? Uh, you know, I feel like we should probably just buy it. Uh, I'm, I'll leave the paper for now. Uh, although, plus one science per research technology, and then plus one science per paper when a leverage intel is collected. I don't know. I don't know if those are worth it. I mean, I, when when you own them, that's probably great, but I'm not sure. Let's, we'll hold on that. I, I like the idea of them. Uh, these are all been declined. We have to have a pretty poor relationship with Plosive right now, too. So, okay. So, those are our, all of our treaties are looking fine. I think we're doing good. Geopolitically speaking, we have problems. Icarus and Plosive both have problems with us. We've got a pretty strong alliance with Burley. Who in turn, we have a pretty strong alliance with Nox because of all the vassalization that has been happening. Uh, we own our entire continent. We do need to attach this at some point. Uh, Huatu is going to be the one that grabbed that. Uh, we're just trying to kind of stabilize uh, a little bit here. We only have 12 excess food. And we only have, uh, we're only at 90 stability and moving in that direction. If we attach this, we drop stability. Uh, they also have a ton of people as well. So we would impact our food by a substantial amount in that regard as well. So uh, I want to stabilize Watu. This noust will help from the food standpoint. So maybe we noust into something that will give us a little bit of stability. Uh, which probably, I mean, we could even put like a city watch in. Uh, we'd get plus 10 stability out of that. So we could probably do that. In fact, I'm just going to do that. We're going to go noust into city watch. That's going to help with our stability and our food. And then I think we attach right after that. We'll be able to grab this attachment. Everything else I believe is attached. We have our second uh, city on the new world, Agra, where we just burned down all of the outposts in this area that had been claimed and took the land for our own. And so we're building Jama Masjids there. And I think we're off and running. We're currently debating whether Plosif, if Plosif ever gained uh, freedom from Icarus, which he has tried once already, would probably declare war on us. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of paying attention to that scenario just to see what's going to happen there. Icarus is also very angry with us. Uh, so if Icarus declares war, uh, we want to have troops in this vicinity. And this is where I was hoping there was going to be 11 units, potentially. There is no military units here in Lemken. They, they have no military. I don't know where the military is. I'm gonna go, go around and look for it. But if we don't find it, I think we just take the city. We could just incorporate it into Agra, maybe. All of that is gonna make Agra maybe possibly a little too big, but I mean, they're doing okay. Stability's not great here, so we should probably focus on that a little bit. We'll see what we build there next turn. We're going to run these guys around the island and see if we can't just find units. Um, they only have four people here, so we'd only get four of the 11 we need. We kind of need the 11. I'm not seeing anywhere else where we're going to get those. We could come up here, but that's Burley's ally, and we don't really want to mess with that. So really the only one left, unless we want to declare a war, uh, the only place left to do this is going to be here uh, in this free people city. So we'd like to grab a few military victories there if we can. Uh, but we, 11 units would be optimal, uh, but I'm not seeing them. It, it's not worth going to war unless, you know, eh, we could take the territory. The territory's got some nice things in it. Actually, it's got some really nice things in it. Um, we're going to take it either way, I think. Uh, but <laughs> it would be nice if there was 11 units there. So, all right, let us end turn and we'll we'll get rocking and rolling. We also want to check on our wonders. We're trying to get top copy palace. Uh, you can't see it, but we need uh, 7,450. Um, 7,450 is our magic number for influence that we need to get that as well. So we'll be plugging away towards that. Five try to make an extra quarters. claim. Of it wonder. seems that someone took the phrase building your future a bit too literally. Well, maybe we did. Uh, people are converting to madness, so that's good. Um, and then let's see, Burley is, Burley is at war with someone still. Who's Burley at war with? Greetings. To what do I owe this? Place? Burley is at war with Icarus and Plosif uh, still. That's intriguing. That's a large, that is a large scale war. Very interesting. All right, I can't remember which part of the triangle these guys had just done. Um, 
which way are they facing? They're facing down, which probably means they just came from over here. Let's do let's do one of these. We'll pop them out over here. Break the fog here, go back in like we have been, and then come back down. Again, we're just looking for curiosities. Um, so if we see any curiosities, then we pick them up, and if not, uh, we don't. The best place to find curiosities at this point in the game is in these ocean tiles, so that's what we're trying to do. All right, Agra is going down to a 52% stability. So we do want to work on stability here. They did get one of their Jamamas Jeeds in. That's good. Um, they don't have any other uh, infrastructures they can put in. Remember, we researched the tech, so they have all the infrastructures. So really, the only thing we can do is put garrisons or commons quarters in. Uh, I, if you watch this at all, you know that I'm a huge fan of garrisons over commons quarters. I actually cannot remember the last time I built a commons quarter. Um, arguably they could be better, but usually you want to surround your districts with other things and then the garrison just becomes better, in my opinion? I don't know. So we're going to put in, we're going to put in a garrison. Um, that is what I like to do. Let's throw it somewhere, somewhere where there's not going to be a lot of use for us. We want to put it somewhere where the land is not very useful to us. Actually, this right here would be a lovely spot for it because our harbors are over here and over here. And so this will never be kind of a, a really useful tile to us. Also, it's got to look cool, I think, right here. So let's throw a garrison in right there. They'll do that in one turn. I'm just going to set them uh, to do a Java Moss Jeed right after that in their next territory. That, oh, adjacency. We're going to go Java Moss Jeed adjacent to Java Moss Jeed. That is actually very intriguing, and I like it. So there we go. The double Java Moss Jeed, uh, which is quite lovely. Uh, not... Not going to argue with that at all. That sounds great. Okay. Uh, we have a battle. Oh. Is this Icar This is Icarus coming to attack me? Uh, very intriguing. Icarus attacking me in a free people's land. I mean, I'll take the fight. What, what do we got here? We have a knight, and then what is the reinforcement? Like a ridiculous ship. It is a single ship with 52 attack. So, the Geobuxion, which is the Korean special unit, uh, very potent. Very potent. This ship alone could... Let's... Will it one-shot any of my guys? Like, I'm not afraid of the knights. The knights are only a 37. But that's the comparison that we're making here. This is why, in previous episodes, I've been talking about naval... Naval strategies right now are huge in this game. Particularly in the early modern age, when you get access to Karax or in the case of Korea, their unique unit. 52 to 37 is not, but that's what we're at. Like we're at Knights. Knights are good for us right now. And even he's running Knights and you're coming in with a boat that is going to do 52. That can shoot four tiles away and has the ability to shoot land units. It, it will one shot a lot of different units, which is why I'm hesitating on this fight um, because we have Knights. But we also have archers at 22 attack compared to the 52 attack being offered by the by the boat. A lot of these units, and particularly my Aga Ushas, will prob would probably die to this boat. He's attacking me, so he's going to get first shot. Um, and I cannot, I cannot avoid, oh gosh, I cannot avoid anything. I I'm stuck fighting on coastal tiles. This boat alone will probably kill all of my units. Let's see what the instant resolve says. I, I, there's no way I fight this, but if the instant resolve somehow gives me a win without losing like terrible amounts of units, like maybe I'll take it. The instant resolve says we die. Straight up, we lose this fight. The boat destroys us. <laughs> Which I, I am willing to actually believe is probably the case. Uh, this boat alone would probably wipe out this army before we could shoot it down because all we've got is archers shooting a boat that has 52 attack strength. Uh, so we're on an island and we took a risk going here and we may never get off of it. <laughs> so we're going to retreat this. We'll retreat that uh, right into his boat, which I don't know if he'll then attack us again. He certainly could. We could end up just losing this regardless. This is going to get really icky because at the start of the next turn, he could push us again and we cannot retreat. Uh, we would just be stuck. If we jumped into Burley's land... No, he's at war with Burley, so that doesn't help us either. And we can't get back into our land. So effectively... Effectively... Uh, well, we could initiate the attack on the city. If we initiate the attack on the city, 
take this. That, that probably is what we have to do. I'm going to try that. We're going to take this army, attack the city, hopefully before he can do anything next time. Now, uh, when we do this, you will find out that I will probably get very frustrated because... There is some sort of turn order that happens in Humankind. I haven't quite figured out what it is, but movement seems to happen in some sort of turn order. Um, and so you'll see when we get there what that looks like. It looks like that's actually in turn for us. So we're good to go. Uh, everything is set and we're building things. I want to double check on our capital city because I know we were building... So we're down to 38 food. We're growing in one turn. We're putting in a stupa and then we're going to announce. I think what we do after that is just we just like alternate. Stupas and Nousts. Uh Again, we've got to get our Jamamas Jeeds in as well. Um, but I think we have to alternate those. I also did a little bit of reading on the manufactories. I think because I think I only own one of these, I believe. So salt. We're getting we have three. We have access to three. No, see, we should be able to build this. Oh no, because there's three more from Plosive. There, there is so much salt in the world. So I believe you actually have to physically own the deposits for 50% of the resource now in order to build a luxury manufactory. So we would have to go out, uh, it looks like there's nine total. We have three, Burley has two, Nox has one, Plosive has three, at least that's what's on the board right now. So there's nine total, so we would need to control five of those instead of just the three we have in order to in order to make the manufactory uh, in this. I believe that was a change that came out during the last patch uh, or a couple patches ago when they changed the way that luxury manufactories work, uh, which again is probably a good change because most of the time you could just be trading with everybody and just build them all. So uh, I had forgotten about that change uh, in the previous episodes when we were trying to put those in, but I believe that's the case with those. Okay, so we're going to run over here. Oh, wait, I want to check. Uh, let's check Urim really quick. They're cranking Naus. That's good. Uh, we need multiple Naus here probably. They have really low industry. We probably need to help them out a little bit with industry. Okay, let's come over here to this. I'm going to select this army, and we're going to be, like, ready to move them in. With 15 farmer's quarters, you'll soon be needing another 15 quarters just for food storage. Oh, they ran units out. Oh, perfect. Are they attacking me? Oh, they're attacking me, and I have two tiles. So once again, you kind of saw what happened there. I started having stuff pop up. I was trying to move my units as quickly as possible. I was not able to move my units, um, and so now our army is arguably in a spot of trouble. If we could have moved on to this spot before they came out to attack us, we would have had a lot more maneuverability here. Uh, now we're going to be in a spot of trouble depending on what units they have here. That's not going to be great for us, and we can't retreat, so that's a fight we're going to have to take. Um, interesting. All right, uh, Icarus is, is leveraging more against us, so Icarus has dropped Perhaps our war support down by quite a bit. He keeps placating every ground. turn. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and renounce this because it's got it only two turns left on it. To let we'll take a little extra diplomacy there. Uh, we got a bunch of guys there. We probably could have could have held on that, but hopefully we come collect a lot of these. Okay, well, let's keep our units moving. We'll come back to that fight at the end. Uh, nice. We can now enact this for free. Okay, here's what I want to see. Here's what I want to see because I'm really intrigued about this. Uh, Icarus and I have actually been testing this off stream as well, offline. Uh, what is our current science per turn? 2133. We're at 2133 science per turn. We are going to enact foreign innovations, which used to be one of the best techs in the game if you were trading heavily. Plus one science per number of trade routes on city or outpost. Uh, 2133. Can I enact this while this is up? I'd like to watch this number move. We're going to enact this. We proposed this in the World Congress to make sure that it came up and that we could enact it for free and not have to pay. So let's see what happens. 200 science out of that. Okay, so it's still pretty dang worthwhile. So we went up by by over 200 or almost 200. That's pretty decent. That's a decent chunk when you're talking about having only uh, 2,300 science. So, so the question becomes, and we were looking at this, so we have... Again, I don't know how to, like, what is the total number of trade routes here? You know, like what is the total number of trade? That's so my trade routes. 156 resources bought and 105 sold. I mean, that's well over what we just added. So like something, it, it's one of these is, it's just the ones that are sold or something that is giving us like trade. So a Nug has that many. Urim has 66 or 52, whichever those. Watu doesn't, uh, has only nine and it, that's Your internal trade. Your efforts and trade. success put you above many. But not above all. 
Other empires are leaving a greater mark. Look, look, Mr. Narrator. Excuse me, sir. I'm doing my best here. All right, Corral has like a, like, that's not even, that there's no trade there. 11 internal trade. And then we have very little trade over here, right? So maybe that makes sense. I don't know if it's just totaling 150, the 156, the 66, and then the rest of them. Like, I guess that would be correct. So it's like, is it just resources bought, maybe? I don't know. It's very confusing. It's, uh, that That is, I don't know where those numbers come from necessarily. So uh, maybe at some point someone could comment on that and tell me where the number of trade routes actually comes from now. Uh, because I actually, I don't particularly know. Another? Oh no, this is a, a Carrick now. Beautiful. All right, uh, so here's what I want to have happen. Uh, these guys can probably, let's send these guys back. This guy's gonna go unpack these. Maybe start to form, oh, three of them again. This happened before too. Beautiful. Now we get another Carrick, we'll add that Carrick in. We'll collect again, maybe it'll be another Carrick. There it is. And now we have a whole navy, beautiful. There's an Agrarian Star, because we're just collecting. And we'll go see if this is yet another Carrick. And we'll have a whole nother navy, which wish to use. And again, these Carricks, don't forget, 56. 56 attack strength on these. These, these would win fights for us. Actually, we should, br these guys, we should have brought these guys over here. Oh, that was kind of a mistake. We probably should bring... Now, this group has a bunch of cogs, and cogs cannot shoot land targets. Uh, but we do have a Karak here. Maybe we bring that, that whole group of Karaks over? That would be that would be potentially interesting. Okay, what's going on over here? Oh, our envoys are getting, in, getting themselves in trouble. All right, envoys, careful. Careful. All right, this fight is probably a loss, to be honest. I, I don't, with we, with only being able to, to put guys on two tiles, uh, I don't know how we're gonna fight off this, this fight. We cannot retreat, because we already retreated, so that's that. And we are fighting against Halberdiers at 41 strength. All right, so our maneuver onto this island was probably a failure. Now, they can only attack with one guy, right? This is gonna be a 1v1 attack here because they have halberdiers and I'm gonna have whatever spawns. It looks like my knights are gonna spawn in first, which is actually really bad uh, because that's anti-cav. So my knights are gonna be dead for sure. And then my swordsmen will probably spawn in. They only have 29 attack. I think we're just gonna lose every single one of our units here. Yeah, the instant resolve is indicating uh, it's just gonna be a massacre. And I think that's probably gonna be true. It's gonna be kind of unfortunate. I could try to, like, get people in the water, maybe, after the initial... Like, this guy dies, and then we try to put people in the water, maybe? Uh, maybe they won't fight those people. We could try to save a couple of our units. I don't think this is gonna go well for us at all, though. Here's one thing I wish you could do, and maybe you can, and I'm just not aware of it. I wish you could choose which unit spawns when you, when you are deploying your troops. I wish I could go over here and select which troops I want to put in. Um, maybe I could right here. I mean, I want my knights to spawn regardless. They're my best unit. It's just unfortunate that, uh, I would love the Semen Yahas to spawn in the back line. Can I do that? Can I move these? That's what I want to do. I want to move these guys into the battle because I don't understand why it's, it like auto selects who it selects. Like I want these guys in the fight, in the, in the back rather than, rather than my swords. Like I, why would I want these guys there? Like I would prefer... I can't, like, move them. I can't unselect them. I don't know how to switch them into reinforcements or back and forth. I don't understand. And you can't... The other thing you can't do is when you're adding reinforcements into a battle, I don't think you can add the re... Like, which, which unit, like, comes out is just the next one on the in the queue or whatever, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. So, uh, we can't do anything but this, so uh, we'll just end deployment. We may never... Actually, you know what? We would be able to save all of these units. These units would not die if we just sit here and let these two guys die and never add in our other units. So we can at least save four of our armies. Yeah, that hurts a ton. The, it's, anti, it's, the, it's the best available anti-cav versus these guys. It's, it's not going to go well, right? Uh, can we jump into the water? That's the question. I think we jump into the water because they can't attack us. I think we can actually save all of our units here. Potentially. They may just die at another time, but if we just jump into the water here, we should be able to just end round. They take our flag. I don't think they can attack us, right? 
and we'll actually save all our units here. Okay. I mean, now Icarus could just come and attack us now as well. So we want to, at the end of the next turn, I guess we want to like jump into the water so that they can't do that again. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. We need, obviously, we can upgrade these units. I chose not to before we left, but we, we need to upgrade them, obviously. We have the tech to do it. Uh, in fact, we even have the gold. Uh, oh, no, I spent all the gold. We almost have the gold to do it. Uh, we need to save up some gold. That's fine. Uh, but once we once we do that, then we should be able to uh, come back and maybe do what we want to do. But uh, so that's five and four. That's nine. That's nine total units there that we'd be able to fight. These are 52 attack on these guys. It's, uh, they're very, that's very intimidating. I don't even know if I want, like, an army of Karaks over there. Karaks versus, versus these guys, versus the, the Geobuxeons. I don't, that's not how, how to pronounce it, probably, but, uh, that would be, that'd be a very tough fight, so. We'll see. All right, these guys. We can pick a technology. We are rolling through techs right now. We could get our... Gajnal update. Uh, we could also get access to Karax uh, or uh, Mana Wars, which would be fantastic to have as well. Uh, we get our money up a little bit. Plus one science per pop is really nice. Uh, we can start pushing science if we scroll along the top here. Also get access to just way better units. If we get the, the Arquebusiers, that would be a really good addition. Uh, so maybe we, maybe we do that. Maybe because there seems to be like war knocking on our doorstep. Uh, we'll we'll go down that path. It looks like somebody, multiple people already have, and so there's already teched people probably out in that direction. Let's do that. Uh, I also want to double check and make sure we have all of our envoys out in the world. Uh, we do seven out of seven, so we are we are good there. And then I think we end turn. And I guess uh, I, I don't want to put these guys in Icarus's land because I think the ship will automatically come and try to attack us. But I'm not sure how to get these guys out otherwise. Because if we move them here, then they just get attacked by this group again. And the same thing happens, right? Um, so I'm not sure how to get them out. If we get in a naval battle, I'm going to lose all my units. Maybe we just sit right here? I'm not sure. Let's just end turn and see what happens. Masai for Nox. Okay, there's there's the fight. Once again. So we're just going to lose the fight again. Okay, we have, we'll, we'll deal with that in a moment. Uh, we're not gonna lose any units again. It'll just be the same exact thing. And maybe Icarus will may move some boats away so we can like sneak out on the next turn. All right, so a Nug is nearing starvation. We have four turns. They're only at minus five food and we're about to get a Noust in that's gonna get us uh, arguably some ridiculous amount of food, uh, more, more than likely. So uh, we'll let that just happen. That should be totally fine. We are starting to see some stability decreases here as we're building these in. So we probably wanna pay attention to that. Um, and then what was our other city that was starving? Uh, Urim. But we already knew about Urim as well. Oh, but they, they, wow, they, that was a huge switch for them. Interesting. Okay, so they went from positive food to negative food, and we didn't even get the Noust done. Uh, nor can we even buy out a military unit, so I guess we're just gonna have to, uh, just gonna eat the population loss on that. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it unless we somehow collect more gold. Uh, so we could buy a unit or something. Uh, Urim will just decrease in population. They've been kind of struggling a little bit. There's another Karak. As you can see, our gold per turn is going down by a ton. Because we now have a bunch of Karaks, which are not... Uh, look at this. We have a full fleet, almost a full fleet. We have four Karaks floating around here now. Uh, we'll pop them up through here. I don't think anything else will have spawned over here. Because we just came through and snagged all of those. There's, a, there's technically a couple, uh, well, one spot here where a Curiosities could spawn. I'm going to move these guys in this direction because I these guys might be the out for our army up there. This th These guys are not. Uh, these guys, I think, just need to hang out somewhere in, def in a defensive kind of formation. We need the upgrade for those cogs, probably, which I think is the Man of Wars, maybe. We'll have to see. All right, these guys are floating around. I think they already saw that. We'll pop them up here. I don't think they'll find everything. I don't think they'll find anything every time, but like every every so often, every couple turns, we're going to find a curiosity in that route. So this is problematic because my knights are going to spawn first again and they're going to take a, a hefty amount of damage. So we may lose the knights this time. But I think the knights might die unless we can spawn in like our seven yahas maybe. Like the seven yaha would be the only other thing I think that can survive a direct attack. Uh, but I don't think we can like prioritize that coming out. Let's manual fight. Yeah, 
our horses, our horses are, I think our knights are going to die this time, but then the battle will just be over. Ah. That, all right, so they killed the horses this time. The fight is now over. And where did our guys go? Wait, did we lose that whole army? Army destroyed during its retreat. Oh, well, that's a bummer. So they didn't even get to spawn in and they just died because they were they were not they didn't spawn into a retreating fight. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. Well, there you go. Now we have no army on this side of the map. Uh, we should probably start building one, maybe. Uh, who's Pal Palteputra is running into population issues, so we'll probably start trading an army there. Uh, that is a bummer. That is a bummer for sure. If I can get these Karaks up here, we might be able to just, like, engage in a fight and just take hot shots from the ground at those halberdiers. That would be kind of funny, actually. I don't love that we just lost that army. I mean, I sent them up there. I knew it was a risk, but... Dang. All right. I've also been thinking about using Land Razor in our capital city. If we use our Land Razor ability, uh, we can set one city at a time into Land Razor mode. All the money and science are converted into industry... Last for 10 turns, it can be toggled off. And then if you wait 10 turns, you can toggle it back on again in this city or a different one. Uh, we would be adding... Oh, man. This, we'd be losing 746 science per turn, which is the problem. But, so what I think we do is I think... Let's get all our science stars first. Let's get all our science stars. And then I think we... If, if any of our cities, which arguably the, the capital has the longest queue. If any of our cities have a long queue... A AKA the capital. If the capital's queue is still there, we'll put this city into land razor mode for a little bit and just like crank out these districts. That's going to cause stability problems, but I think that's the way we work it. Alright, room lost pop. We knew that was going to happen. It's a bummer, but... Got more leverage against Icarus. He has le de decreased our war support again. You are not welcome here. Not now. The thing is, we have 310 leverage against him. So if he declares war on us, we I'm not going to do it now. I'm not going to decrease it now because he would just be increasing because he's got plus 10 ongoing. Um, but, oh man, we would actually not be able to decrease if he has plus 10 ongoing. But if he declares war, it ceases that influence piece. So uh, and cancels the demands, too. So it, the only way that we make this work from a leverage standpoint is after he declares war, then we start leveraging him. Um, he's probably going to leverage us down like below 50 and then declare war. That would be my guess. That would be my guess. I'm going to renounce that. I know. All right. Huatu is going down to 65% stability. So our stability problem was not fixed by putting in a city watch. <laughs> That's not awesome. Uh, let's recalculate their expert policy. They have a little bit of food. Their stability is dropping pretty rapidly, actually. And... They're approaching population cap. What else do we have to increase stability? Uh, we can put an apothecary. That would increase by, what, four? It's not a ton. Uh, so I think we probably just... Our best bet is to throw another garrison down. Man, that's expensive. Six turns on a garrison to try to fix this problem. The other thing is, what text do we have coming up that might impact that? We don't have much. The next big tech that's going to impact that is going to be microbiology, um, which is plus one stability per population with max vaccination. But that's that's a while away before we get that, right? So uh, 65 is okay, but if we're building districts, that's going to be continuing to drop. Uh, I'm going to get my Jamamas Jeeds in, I think, is the goal here. So let's, let's get them in at least. That's... That actually works. I'm I'm okay with this. I'm okay with the Jamas Jeed there because it's all production-based tiles. We're not going to fill in a lot of that with markets anyway. We've got better market quarter spots. All right. Agra is going down to a 49 stability, which is not something I really want to see. Yeah, no ability to increase it except by putting in more garrisons. Uh, garrisons are going to get us... Uh, garrisons are going to get us... Should be getting us plus 5 because we have the infrastructure. Or plus 10, right? Yeah, on garrison plus five, plus the normal plus five. So we get ten stability for every garrison we put in. Let's go one more garrison. We basically have to alternate garrison Jama Masjid at this point, is my my personal thought here. Uh, let's, let's put one right here. And then again, we'll put the Jama Masjid. 
don't love the John Ross teeth there. But that's fine. It's fine. Let's just... Okay, so Garrison, John Ross Deed there. I think that's probably the play. And we've got Carex coming up. And Palata Putra could potentially train uh, my army back. I hate that we lost all those those units. It was it was a really poor decision on my part to send unupgraded units up here. I made a bad assumption that maybe they had bad units. What you could look at, actually, to probably make a pretty good assumption about that is if they have a lot of turns left... It probably means that they're relatively recent, and the more recent a Free Peoples are, the more likely they are to have a higher level units of a tech tree. Um, so I probably should have just assumed that they, plus they're aggressive, and I sent my guys up there anyway. It was all around probably just a, I probably should have thought about it. I was standing right here. We could have easily upgraded our units to save the gold, upgraded the units, um, and then made our move. So that's on me. Uh, we lost a bunch of, like, oh, that those, that was our original army that did all of our conquering on our continent. Like, yeah, it feels pretty bad, you know, because they were highly upgraded uh, units, and they didn't even get to fight their way out. They literally, almost all of them just died in retreat status, uh, which, which is a real bummer, so. All right. Let's end turn. Rock and roll. We're climbing up close towards that top Cappy claim. Osmosis event. Oh, I love osmosis events. Let's check it. Altiputra has one. I don't see where it is. It'll pop up at some point here. We'll get to see what that is. Osmosis events happen when you are under the influence, uh, like cultural influence, of another territory. Uh, if you are following all of their civics, then you will get science osmoses, and you get to claim large amounts of science. If you are not following all of their civics, which is usually the case, then you either have to take the civic that they have, uh, or you have to take a massive penalty in stability, which we can't afford right now, um, to to not take it. So there, there it is. It popped up right now. So the Civics Osmosis is Conquered Empires plus 10 support when winning a battle on Relations. So we're just going to enact this. We don't have anything uh, We don't have anything in that. In fact, we can check and see if you ever want to know. Uh, if you open up your Civics, um, it will show purple. You can basically, if you see a purple, purple shiny there, that means you can select this civic for free right now. They're basically telling you with the purple, like, don't click and pay to do this one right now because you have an osmosis that will allow you to get it for free. Uh, we haven't even selected one of these yet, so that's easy for us to just say, perfect, we'll enact it. Uh, we get a free civic basically out of the deal. We didn't even have to do anything for it, so that's not that's not bad at all. We'll take that any day. Uh, let's get our cracks up here. If I can get within range of these guys, I would love to see their units, like, sitting right here still. Because if we could take that fight... Where are their units? Their units, like, disappear all the time. There they are. Perfect. Can I attack them? Can I not run that attack? Impossible. I need, I need a, a ground unit to initiate the attack so that my boats can join the fight. I did not know that. Okay, well, maybe we, uh, we have a knight if we want one. Can we send a knight up there to initiate the attack? Then we just to get him in the water as quickly as possible on our first turn and then just bombard them? I mean, that's the plan, right? The knight initiates the fight, jumps into the water because we have first move, and then the boats just all shoot the units. I, I mean, that that would be an easy win because they can't even attack my boats. Th th this is where I think, again, like, boat strategies, uh, is, there's, it's questionable. Should we attack Icarus's envoy? I feel like we should, honestly. Like, what do you want? I guess he's, he's claimed, got seven demands claimed against me. Like, it's, it's kind of wild. I don't think. Where have you been? I don't want to entice him into, like, a, a fight, but... This proposition should be in all... A pleasure to see you again. Uh, look, bro, here's the, here's the thing. I really love a customs unit. I still have stuff to buy from. We would all... Uh, every time, he's 3,000 gold. I'm so... Every time. Talk, though I'd as soon see you bleed as speak. I mean, I would I like to offer you humanitarian aid. You. You're under the vassalage of somebody who clearly... So like, you tried to rebel, it didn't work. I feel like now would be a great time to, like, gain friends. What was that noise? Did anyone hear that? The heck? That was a fascinating sound. It sounded like we, like, double claimed a curiosity or something. This is my land! What do you mean I can't- Oh, Burley's ship is in my way. Okay. Well, we'll just hang out here for then. 
All right, Pallet to Putra, we're good on food. Stability is consistently dropping. I do want... Oh, we don't even have... Well, Apothecary's not in. City Watch is not in. I think let's get our Jamas Jeeds. Let's get our Jamas Jeeds down. 37... I'm not opposed to that. Wait, doesn't... Isn't this also part of that? Oh, those need to be researched. So this is fine, because then we can come and put some in down here. Yeah, okay, I'm fine. We almost g that. Let's do it. Uh, we're also at pop cap, so the question is, do we, we buy a unit while we're here or train one? We could train a unit, like a real fast unit here. Uh, we can't do our units yet. But we could get a real quick... Two turn out a halberdier. I don't really love the idea of a halberdier. We could two turn out a crossbow or a great swordsman. Oh, you know what? We could be getting Arcabuses if we have salt. Do we have access to that in any of our cities? Let's find out. Not in this one. Where do we have access to that? Not in Agra. Not in Corral. Do we not have access to it? Oh, gosh. We can get iron. Do we not have... We don't have it in our entire land. Our last hope. One place where we can get it. We have three. I don't know if that's going to take us where we need to go. Oh, boy. Buy that out. Oh, I can't buy it out. We're just shy of buyout. Uh, let's let's get it in. Let's prioritize that for a moment. We'll get it in in three turns. And then we can start... Then we'll start buying uh, Arquebuses. So that we can have the most dominant military force over here. Uh, and, and in that case, I think actually we want to go straight to Gajnals maybe, and even maybe Musketeers. Uh, we're not really building infrastructures right now anyway, so like all the stuff up here would be grand. Uh, we could get an extra spot in our navy. I like the idea of getting access to our special unit just in case things start to turn and go in a weird direction here. Alright, let's keep it moving. Ah, we can grab our wonder. Let's take a look at our unclaimed wonders. We have one attachment to make. That's the only other thing we're, we're spending on. Uh, St. Balls is still available. We could faith per district. We could push our faith. Basically, St. Balls would secure our religion permanently because it would be a lot of faith. Uh, we'd be cranking out with St. Balls, which which does pair well with certain things, but we're not spreading our... We don't have Machu Picchu, so we're not spreading our, our food around, but we would definitely have a ton of food if we put it in, especially if we put it in our, our city that also has Angkor Wat in it. Uh, Taj Mahal uh, gets you money. Uh, we're not making a ton of money anyway, and since it's a uh, percent-based money, it's not going to give us, like, a ton. I mean, it's not a bad wonder at all. Uh, the Palace of Versailles leverage action stuff is not... Look, if you're if you're winning wars based off of leverage action, uh, Palace of Versailles is, is great. If you've got commons quarters, um, and you want to surround the Palace of Versailles with commons quarters, uh, like, it's a good it's a good wonder for that. I think it's probably weak. Top Cappy is easily uh, the best one left here, and it's probably the best one maybe even in this in this era, potentially, depending on what you're doing. Uh, but you get influence per makers, so you don't really care about that. But what you do care about is the 100% production towards any shared project. That's National Project, Holy Site, or Cultural Wonder. So that when you start putting down your projects for whether it's satellites, whether it's a space race, whether any of those things, 100% production in the city with in which you put Top Cappy. That is a big amount. Um, so we are going to uh, put Top Copy in the city that has the most production. We're going to claim it first. Uh, so we'll put the claim in. We'll grab Top Copy. That's also worth 100 fame, right? Once we build it, we'll get 100 fame plus another 50 because we have Brussels Town Hall. So that's 150 fame on the build. And we get that plus 100% production bonus towards shared projects. Uh, our city with the most production, I guarantee you, is Corral, 606. I'm pretty sure that's going to be true. The capital is, is coming up on it, like, kind of close. Uh, the capital is doing okay. We could put it in the capital for stability purposes, even. Um, everyone else is super low. Uh, some of our cities, in fact, are incredibly low. And we need to take a look at what the heck is going on in Anug and Huatu. They, they, or, or, sorry, Urim and Huatu have such low production. I'm wondering if they don't have... There's 30, there's 22, and there's 19, and there's 50. Okay, so they haven't put... Uh, Urim, I see what your problem is. Okay, stop what you're doing for a second. There, There is 50 industry in four turns sitting right here. We're going we're gonna to ramp to it. We're going to go... Let's go 30. Uh, let's go uh, 22, because then we can build those even faster. Uh, and then we'll do the 50. 
Then we'll do the 50 after that. Uh, and then honestly, like the 19 is probably worth it as well. Uh, then everything else will build faster. We probably should have done that a while ago. I think we've been worried about pop cap. We've been worried about food in this city. Stability is uh, actually not a problem at all in this city, uh, which is interesting. So uh, let, let's get those in. That's probably a really good idea. <laughs> Uh, we're building the, the saltpeter mine here. I'm willing to bet they have the same problem. Yeah, they have the same things not in. Um, oh, but that's only four. Okay, so they don't have any... Oh, they put their big stuff in. So this place is just not productive. So that's fine. We'll leave them... We'll leave them to do, to do their thing. Okay. I think we're good there. Jump over to our knight that's gonna come try to cheese we're gonna try to cheese a naval strategy here which is gonna be arguably uh, kind of funny so yeah. we'll see what happens i really just want to attack this guy what's what what would what would be stop he's already as angry as he can be yet let's let's get a little bit a little bit of war support you know get out of my land send your guy away this guy needs to do his little maneuver up into here We'll see what we see. Actually, you know, I could probably just move right away and then we'll just check it on the next turn. We can't run this attack, so we'll just sit on this piece of water right here. Keep an eye on this unit. The knight's gonna be there probably two turns from now. And we'll get to see if our little see if our little strat will work. Fifteen makers quarters? At this rate, the entire city is going to turn into an automaton. Okay, this is gonna get real interesting. So we can run this attack on this one. Okay, Urum is starting. Urum, are you serious? You're gonna lose a pop, and every time they gain a pop, they lose a pop like immediately. I don't think there's any way I can help them to be honest. I think we just go with it. I mean, we could buy a unit here, but I think they we just let them we just let them like yin yang around. Arguably, we are going for stars, so we could spend gold on like a something that drops their population, but. Until we get access to the Archibusaeus, I'm not really interested in buying the stuff. I think we just save our gold for, for buying Archibusaeus in cities. Uh, we'll just let them kind of do their thing. What's this? Maybe they can get something from this. From distant shores, the bustling city of Urum, sailors from distant lands mingle with the locals, bringing colorful tales, fantastic legends, and sometimes peculiar fruits and vegetables. One such specimen is especially delicious. Your advisors tell you it appears well suited to flourishing in the soils of the homeland and suggest planting a crop. What is your decree? Uh, we can dismiss them, uh, which would probably be a bad idea. We lose science, uh, but pushes us towards religion. We can gain science and lose money. Uh, the benefits should be plentiful, but there may be distrust, so we need to convince the local citizens. That would get us straight science and push us really high on the science tree. We do lose, if you will note, we do lose plus 5 stability in all cities by gaining the plus 10 science. So that's something to consider as you're moving along those axes on your civics tree. Make sure you consider the fact that in the middle, you're getting plus 10 stability on all your cities. On the two outer ones, uh, you're getting no stability and you get plus five stability in those middle, the middle sections that are away, the, the second the second tiers on in both sides, right? Um, so you get this stability if you're in the middle, you get some stability if you're the next one over, and then a bonus to whatever kind of side you're sliding towards. And then if you go all the way over, uh, you only get the, the bonus to whatever you're sliding towards, and then not the stability. So just something to keep in mind as you're doing that. We can endorse. Eventually, locals will see the benefits, but, they need to, but to begin with, they will need to be coerced. Uh, forced labor. We would reduce stability by 10 for 10 turns on Urum. Urum actually does not have a problem with stability currently. And the plus production would be huge in this city. Uh, I'm okay with this, actually. I'm going to do it. I don't like moving further this way, but it's only one box that we're moving. We're actually going to increase our stability because we're going to go back to plus 10 there. So we're actually only going to lose five stability uh, on the city, which is kind of nice. So all right, let's confirm that. I don't mind that. We'll send these guys up here again to try to just... Yeah, there's there's several. Uh, we're never going to get to those probably before they get clean. We'll We'll try. All right, and now, <laughs> now we're going to see if the cheese works. If not, we just have a knight that's going to die. So we're going to run this attack. Get ready, attack. Into the water, out of the water, we run the attack. Instant resolution says we die. What's their re- They have Karaks? 
No, that's me. Oh gosh, I thought that was their Karaks. I was like, I was like, there's no way that I've never seen them build Karaks before in Free People's Cities. I, that terrified me. It's fine. Okay, so they're saying we lose this fight, right? Oh no, they're everyone dies. The horseman doesn't die. Oh, we could just instant resolve this. Cool, I don't even have to fight it. So they're saying the cheese works. Even the instant resolve is saying the cheese works, right? Uh, the Karax, this one takes damage from something? I have no idea how this Karak would take damage. I, I have no idea how that's possible. It actually should not be possible. So I don't know how that's happening. Uh, and they're saying my horse will almost be dead. That's acceptable. Uh, and then, and then again, all of their halberdiers die in the instant resolve. So we're just going to do that. Uh, so we'll run the instant resolve here. Boom. Done. Five more military kills. And that, if they spawned some more units and we could cheese that fight too, that would be great. So now we're going to have to get our horse out of there and healed up, right? So we'll bring the horse back. The Karaks did their job. Basically, they just bombarded them the whole time. If I would have run the fight, I would have pulled my horse out immediately into the water where they can't attack him. And then the boats would have just sat here and bombarded their units. And their units can't do anything, right? I mean, that's effectively what the strat was. Apparently, the computer agreed and gave me the win on the fight. I didn't even lose the horse, uh, which is crazy. I, I don't know. The the, Karak, the Karaks would not have one-shot those halberdiers, so... I'm not sure how the, the computer ran that fight, uh, but somehow the horse lived. I thought I was going to have to manual battle it just to get the horse to live, but... All right, Pallet to Putra is going down to 60% stability. Food, uh, next turn, we're going to consume a little more. Let's get this final Jawa Moss Jeed in. I think they only have one more to put in here, so let's just, let's finish that. This, again, we got some adjacency here, so that's awesome. Let's do that. Urum, yeah, we, knew, we know about Urum. We're just going to, we're just going to let Urum... Go back and forth on pop. Where is this fight? Icarus is fighting my boats? And I can't retreat? Is he ambushing my boats? How can I not retreat this? Oh my goodness. Oh, we're, yeah, these boats is going to die. How can I not retreat this fight? Oh, because we are we have the Lost at Sea status on us right now. And if you have that status, you can't... Oh, wow. Icarus getting very bold with his boats. That's a little terrifying, to be honest. Um, I mean, unfortunately, my boats are just cogs, so... They, they stand no chance in this fight whatsoever. Uh, we'll manual fight it and see if we can't, like, escape any of them, like, out. Um, all their units are coming from here. wonder if we, like, we could, like, split them. We, like, split the boats, and then maybe we get, like, some of them out. Oh, that guy they can see. I should have thought about that. Okay, so they're gonna go after these guys now. These guys are still hidden. The cannon fire that's gonna- that this cog is gonna, uh, gonna undertake. Yeah, they're gonna- these guys are gonna die. These guys might get to- get to leave. Oh, now they can see him. Ah, there was no good place to hide. All right, goodbye, boats. I'm sorry. Try to hide him again. We're just like, we're basically just trying to avoid line of sight. This guy's not even hidden anymore, though, so it doesn't matter. They, they, as soon as they cross over here, they can... Oh, wait, he's still hidden. This guy's still hidden in a reef. That guy's gonna die. This guy might survive. You can see the little hidden icon above him. It means they don't see where he is. Could we get this guy? I'm just trying to get him hidden again. Okay, we got him hidden again. Okay. <laughs> He's not hidden anymore. As soon as they moved a boat, I think they were able to see him. So that guy might die. This guy might live now. We're pulling them away from that boat. We might have salvaged a boat. He's like, he's looking. He's looking for my boat now. If this unique unit is potent. He's got to get all the way onto like here probably to see him. Oh! No! <laughs> Dang it! Ugh... Oh, he killed an envoy in that fight? 
Wait a minute, where was the envoy? Oh, I didn't even see that there was an envoy in that fight. That's rude. Okay, so Icarus has ridiculous boats, so we have to we have to pay attention to that. Uh, we might need our own ridiculous boats, possibly. Okay, we gotta get this guy off the island. Twelve scientist stars. It's always nice to see fame collected with wits rather than weapons. Station this guy over here. Uh, let's see if they have any other units. Uh, oh, I can't. I can only go. I can only go back and forth right here. I would love for them to spawn another set of units. That's what I need to get that military star. Again, what we we can we can, once this guy is healed, we can run the attack on the city with him and just have the boats bombard, right? Like that will be the goal. Uh, the, these boats are actually in open water. These boats would potentially be in trouble because we don't have the upgrade for these cogs yet. Uh, this is gonna be the last turn of this episode as well. By the way, I got I'm like fully invested in the game. Uh, let's see. I, I think all these probably disappeared. Oh, maybe not. We'll grab that. Beautiful. Alright, this guy's gonna heal. Coral is... Actually, Coral is back. They need some food, uh, is what they need. And they actually have quick access to food. They get 34 food in turn, so we'll build that real quick. And... And then we'll just start putting in our Jama Moss Jeeds, right? We just start Jama Moss Jeeding. Jama Moss Jeeding as much as we can. Uh, we actually want a market quarter there. Isn't that what we decided? I think we decided we wanted a, mar a market quarter there. I should just place a market quarter there so that it stops popping up. Oh, that's a... The Jama Moss Jeed is just so big, though. It's a 50... You know what? Oh, we can't surround it with things, though. It's like limited value. It's 53 now, but it's not anything later. So let's just do this. Let's put that down. I'm obviously not going to build it. And then we put our job. Yeah, the Jama Moss Jeed maybe goes here because we can at least get one more around it. It's still not op awesome because we would still... Well, you know what? It's it's fine. Let's just put it down. I want to build that first. Agra. Where are you? 82%. We got, what, one Jama Moss Jeed? Let's get the last Jama Moss Jeed in. Is that where we want it? Uh, I thought that's not the worst spot. And then we put a couple of those in there. Or. Or. Oh man, burning burning this food is a little painful. But if we could get a Jama Moss Jeed here, maybe we. We mark it. Can we food quarter this? And then we'll Jama Moss Jeed up. I think that's what I want to do. I don't know if that was the right move or not. Pestilent Pastures 3! Our efforts to stem the disease that robbed the livestock in Huatu of first their minds and then their lives have fortunately been proven effective. The exertion of dealing with the afflicted herds has nothing is nothing compared to the devastating loss of human and animal life alike that we might have otherwise faced. Life will quickly return to normal. So we're now recovering. Plus 15 stability on Huatu. That's nice. They actually need stability, so... Good. And we have a tech to choose. Uh, I believe... Access to these musketeers to get to 49 attack. The 49 attack over the 42 is not huge, but the, this is already unlocked by Burley. So other people already have this tech, right? I would like to get to Man of War, though. I wonder, what is my... What do the cogs promote into? We'll find out. Let's go Let's go naval artillery. Well, obviously, navy is going to be important here. Okay, so pretty successful there, I think. Uh, we moved through the era pretty well. We're getting our Jama Moss Jeeds in. We are collecting stars. We actually collected several stars. No one has moved up into this area yet. We are three techs away from our science star. We're a mere six people away from a military star. We got one of our builder stars in. We'll continue to crank those as much as we can. Uh, we got a diplomat star as well and an agrarian star. Uh, so we're looking pretty good on the era. Next, next week, I think we may be able to do our move up possibly. Uh, we're actually only 200 fame behind Icarus now. This is probably why Icarus has been preparing for war and being super aggressive, because once you once we pass him in fame, the AI will start to become aggressive, and that may become problematic for us, uh, particularly since he has been placating us away tact, uh, very quickly. You? But we will check in on all of that next week. Thank you all so much for watching the episode. I greatly appreciate you. Hit that thumbs up button if you like the content. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you have notifications turned on so you see when we release these videos. Typically, it's on Sundays. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week.